Let's look at how we can calculate descriptive statistics in Excel 2016 for Mac using the Data Analysis Tool Pack. That's an add-in that's really great for calculating statistics. Now, in this example, we have 25 students who have been asked the question, how much do you like Justin Bieber? And they've answered from one, I detest him, to five, I adore him. Now, in previous lessons, we saw that we could calculate the mean by using the average command, and we were able to calculate the standard deviation using the STDEV command. But let's do some calculations using the, the tool pack, the statistics add-in in Excel. Now, to see if you have the add-in already added in, go to Data, and it should show up here if it's um, that says uh, data analysis. Now I've uninstalled mine so I can show you how to reinstall it. You go up to the Apple toolbar here, you click on tools, so this is the top toolbar, the Apple toolbar, and we're going to go to Excel add-ins and it says what add-ins are available. We want the analysis tool pack. We click OK and now the data analysis shows up in the toolbar data. You might have to click it on and off a few times or maybe even restart Excel to get it to show up, but it should show up here. And that means we can use the data analysis tool now for calculating statistics, and we won't have to worry about individual Excel commands. So I click on data analysis, and it gives me a bunch of choices, and I want to do descriptive statistics. So I click OK. And it says, first of all, what's your input range? And I'm going to choose this column of numbers. So starting with C4, I clicked in there. And I'm going to do shift down arrow. Get all of those in there. I'm going to stop at C28. And it says uh, grouped by rows. And uh, um, does it leave do labels in first row? Actually, I should have put the label in the first row. So I'm going to delete that range and I'm going to put the label in the first row and I'm going to go down and choose all of them again. So now it's C3 to C28. I click the box labels in the first row and the output range I could make a new worksheet play. That means the tabs down here, I could put them on a new tab, but I want to be on this same tab so that everybody can see it. So I'm going to do output range and the, um, let's move this away, the output range, and I'm going to click in there so that I fill in there because otherwise the cursor had gone back to the input range. The output range, I want it to, to have the upper left corner be in E7. Now I want summary statistics, so I click summary statistics, and then I press OK, and here I have the descriptive statistics. Let's, first of all, notice how some of them are really long and ugly. Let's round those off. It, notice how everything is highlighted. Leave them highlighted. Go to home and go to the number formatting section and choose number. And that rounds everything to two decimal points, so it's a lot easier to read. Now let's make some of the columns wider also so that we can see what they all are. So here we have the mean, 2.52, that's what we had calculated down there. Standard error, um, which you might not know what that is yet. The median, that's kind of like the halfway point if we were to line them all up in order. The mode, the most common score. Ooh, wonder why it's only one. The standard deviation is 1.42, and that's what we had calculated before, and some other uh, uh, descriptive statistics. Now, when reporting descriptive statistics, you don't want to report all of these. In fact, you only want to report the ones that you understand. That's really important to not just start copying and pasting all this information you get in statistics, but only use the ones that you understand and you want to communicate to the reader. 